Prems and Proms. You may have heard about it before. In this presentation, I would like to uh, address what is it and how to select and measure Prems and Proms. This is a scene that you are familiar with. Doctors, nurses, healthcare providers are examining patients and based on um, these examinations, we can inform what is the status of the patient. And sometimes we have good news. We can tell our patients, congratulations, the tests were negative. Everything is perfectly all right. However, this information is not always in concordance with how patients feel. There are situations where the patients, irrespective of the negative tests, that the patients say, well, still my whole life is affected. I cannot eat, exercise or sleep. And this discordance between the tests and how patients feel is a problem. But to a certain extent, it is understandable because clinicians heavily focus on the results from a physiological uh, test. For instance, clinicians wonder were there complications. What does the imaging say? Did the patient die? And what can we learn from the biomarkers? However, if you look at what matters for patients, the kind of outcomes the patients are looking at, this is completely different. Patients are wondering about the impact on the quality of life. What happened to the functional status? Did the symptoms improve after the new treatment? And are patients able to adhere to this new treatment? These factors are called patient reported outcomes and they are measured with patient reported outcome measures, the so-called PROMS. Next to the PROMS, you have the PREMS. And PREMS in the old days were called satisfaction with care instruments. Indeed, here it has to do with, do patients experience good care? And are we as clinicians meeting the goals of the patients? Measuring PROMS and PREMS typically is done by using questionnaires. The question here is also how to select this. What are criteria to select a PROM or a PREM? And the first criterion is you have to know or to choose if you will take a generic or a disease specific instrument. Generic instruments can be used in different patient populations and also in healthy controls, healthy counterparts, so to speak. Disease-specific questionnaires are really developed for a particular problem in a particular patient population. And of course, disease-specific instruments are quite often more sensitive than generic uh, instruments to capture a specific problem. Second criterion has to do with the validity and reliability of the instrument. Uh, a questionnaire is not just a bunch of questions on a paper. Um, it needs to be evaluated from a scientific point of view. And validity looks at, is this questionnaire really measuring what you want to measure? What is this intended to measure? And the reliability has to do with how accurate, how precise is the measurement. And the better the validity, the better the reliability of this instrument, the better or the more trustful your findings will be. Intelligibility. This has to do with, is this questionnaire understandable? Is this easy to to comprehend what is asked and is it easy to navigate through the, this instrument. And therefore, it is important to have uh, questionnaires at the low uh, reading level. The wording are very important so that everyone, also less educated uh, people, 
can respond uh, to the questions. And also the, the layout is important. Uh, it must be easy for the respondent to know uh, how to navigate through the questionnaire and where to provide the responses. The time frame. Are you interested in the situation right now, today, or over the last week, over the last month, or did a patient ever experienced a certain problem? This time frame needs to be reflected in the questionnaire as well. The length. How long will it take to complete this questionnaire or the complete set of questionnaires that you are compiling for uh, the patients? And it, it depends on what is the setting uh, where you are asking. Is this in a waiting room? Then the time has to be short. Um, are you giving this, uh, these questionnaires so that people can fill it out uh, at home? Then it can be a bit uh, longer. So the length um, will also, uh, to a certain extent, increase the likelihood to get responses. So uh, the, the more time is required, the higher uh, the non-response rate uh, can be. The format. Is it paper and pen or is it online? Um, our experience so far uh, gives the preference to paper and pen. Uh, we see that the response rate in paper and pen um, questionnaires is in general higher than in online surveys. What are the costs? You need to think about licensing. Uh, Contact the originators of the questionnaire, ask is there a certain permission required, do we need to pay for that, yes or no. Um, and if you really want to have that particular questionnaire and there is a cost uh, attached to that, make sure that you uh, comply to that. Otherwise, there are also um, freely available alternatives um, around there and maybe that gives you the same information without the need to pay for it. Translations. Um, in what language do you need this uh, questionnaire or what languages do you need the questionnaire uh, and are they available uh, already or do you need to go through an academic translation process yourself? And then finally, and that may sound strange, choose what you need. I often hear researchers saying like, I'm using this questionnaire because it is often used. Uh, this is seldom a good argument. If you, for instance, are interested in side effects of uh, uh, immuno immunosuppressive therapy after heart transplantation, to give just one example, uh, then make sure that you are using an instrument that is capturing precisely that and avoid that you are taking a very popular, a widely used instrument that is not capturing what you need or what you want to learn. Regarding PROMS in congenital heart disease, there is an interesting evolution or an interesting development. ICOM, this is the International Consortium for Health Outcomes measures, Measurements, they are developing different standard sets for outcome evaluation. And last year they, they developed such a standard set for congenital heart disease. And this is how it looks like. This outcome set comprises both clinical and patient reported outcomes. And if we remove the clinical outcomes here, we see that these are the patient reported outcomes that are proposed by the standard set of ICOM. And it comprises quality of life, health-related quality of life, development, but development from a motoric development point of view, activity level, heart failure, being the symptoms of heart failure, financial burden, productivity, anxiety, depression, and development, but then development from a cognitive point of view. For most of these outcomes, it is not indicated how it should be measured, which questionnaire you should uh, choose, except for a few. 
Here in this overview, the proposals for questionnaires for children are given in green, for adults given in blue. And quality of life uh, is recommended to be measured using satisfaction with life scale, both in children and in adults. Health-related quality of life uh, can be measured in children using the pediatric cardiac quality of life inventory and in adults the PROMISE general health scale. When it comes to productivity, therefore you can uh, use the work productivity and activity impairment questionnaire, the general health version 2. Depression can be measured using the patient health questionnaire and anxiety using the general anxiety disorder questionnaire. Another relevant um, evolution is that last year a patient reported outcome measure for adult congenital heart disease has been published. This uh, PROM has been developed by the group of Ari Seeders at uh, Johns Hopkins and so far only one study has been um, described, has been published describing uh, the results uh, of this. And this PROM is really based on a sound scientific process and it comprises the following subscales. Physical limitations, symptoms, arrhythmias, quality of life, psychological burden. And at the end, a summary score can be calculated. I'm sure more studies will, using, will, will be using this instrument and in the upcoming years we will hear more about it. Approach IS. Uh, you probably have heard about it before. It's an international study on patient reported outcomes in adults with congenital heart disease. And Approach IS used the SF12, the Eurocall 5 dimensions, hospital anxiety and depression scale, health behavior, congenital heart disease scale, linear analog scale, quality of life, and the satisfaction with life scale. And in the subsequent study, the Approach IS-2 study, the following main outcome measures were used. The RAND-12, linear analog scale health status, anxiety and depression in Approach IS-2 was measured using the health, uh, patient health questionnaire and general anxiety disorder questionnaire. And then finally, a linear analog scale for quality of life. The PREMS, these are less well established in congenital heart disease. And when you are trying to find an appropriate uh, PREM, you will see that there are a lot of PREMS developed for inpatient care. And to a lesser extent, PROMS that can be used in outpatient care. And since the mainstay of the patient contacts in congenital heart disease are at outpatient clinics, the outpatient uh, versions or outpatient PREMS are most relevant. And it's not that easy to find a suitable instrument here. In Approach IS-2, um, we are using a patient uh, reported experience measure <clears throat> and uh, we specifically selected the Modified Healthcare Climate Questionnaire. This is a questionnaire comprising 15 items and it, uh, it targets the level of autonomy support that people are experiencing from their healthcare providers. And items read like, I feel that my healthcare pr practitioner has provided me choices and options about my health. I feel my healthcare provider um, understands how I see the things with respect to my health, etc. And as I said, um, this is the first time that uh, a patient reported experience measured is systematically used in a large sample of uh, congenital heart disease patients. Let me come to the conclusions of this presentation. Some take-home messages. PROMS and PREMS complement clinical information. They do not replace clinical information, but they provide uh, a certain 
part of, of data that you never can capture with uh, clinical outcome information or physiological examinations. PROMS and PREMS require a sound scientific underpinning. It's not just a bunch of questions. There is really a body of science underneath. Choose what you need. Select the questionnaire that is capturing the topics that you want to investigate and that you want to address. More recently, a standard set for PROMS is determined. The ICOM has uh, published that. And a dedicated uh, congenital, adult congenital heart disease PROM has been published lately. And indeed, like I said, the PROMS um, are well established in congenital heart disease. There is a vast experience with patient reported outcomes. But PREMS are relatively new and we hope that uh, Approach IS2 can provide some more information on how people experience the care uh, in uh, the congenital heart disease arena. Thank you very much for your attention.